Welcome to the Venezuelan show. Joining me today is Miguel Santa Fe. And we're going to play Habló el Pueblo. In this part of the show, the first thing I'm going to do is show three different signs and then my, my guest here will say his opinion about it. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Schieß nicht auf das Volk, das auch vor ihrer Familie kämpft. Das ist ein Befehl, Soldat des Vaterlands. Es reicht. In other words, it says, do not shoot to the people that are also fighting for your family, the soldiers' families. This is a command, soldier of the fatherland. It's enough. And it's said by Juan Guaido, the president interim of the country of Venezuela. What do you think? I think it's future. I think he's moving on. I think he's very honest and consistent in his message. He's stretching his hand to all the people who are being involved in this regime, especially in the armed forces. And it's really, really important to take all the people and give this message to move on, not to live in the past, regardless of all the problematic and catastrophic situation that we have had. I think it's time to move on and this is the moment to get rid of these people and to get rid of all the really, really bad and really disgusting things that these people have done. And I really believe him and I really consider that it's very necessary to have this kind of consensus of among all the people to like stretch a hand and like to live like brothers because in the end that's what we are. Cese la usurpación, gobierno de transición, elecciones libres. ¿Qué piensa usted? In other words, to stop the usurpation, to uh, the government, uh, to, uh, transition government and free elections. What do you think? I think it's a very clear route. I think it's very straight to the point, like many people would say. I think it's very clear to have one single message, one single route that people can follow, that they can relate to. Mm -hmm. You can see it right now in the news, you can see it everywhere. That this is this become like a mantra, you know, like a, some kind of prayer already, like to seize the occupation, to have the transition of government in order to have free elections. I think it's very consistent, it's very clear, it's very easy to understand, easy to explain. And I think it's our route and I think we're like way ahead in this route and I'm pretty sure it's gonna be yeah, we can mark like some little checks in this paper okay. like very very soon actually. Okay, thank you. Venezuela is not having a coup. It is having a kulikitaka. Kemanguangwa. What do you think about this? Well, very particular this one now. Okay. But I mean regard regarding the coup thing, uh, many people they try to, you know, give their opinion, especially foreign people that maybe they're not aware of like the full situation right now. Mm -hmm. And when they see some guy like swearing in as a president of the country, mm -hmm. they think automatically, oh, it's a coup, it's back the, you know, like United States or this typical <laughs> speech, you know. Mm -hmm. But I think people should be really aware of what is going on right now, like to really, you know, focus on the little details a little bit. What's everything going on the way that is going on right now? Yeah. And uh, definitely it's not a coup. Or like basically taking and swearing our constitution, the articles 233, 333, and 350. You can read them, and er everything is very clear. We don't have any other way that is not in the constitution in a democratic, pacific way. So, this is definitely not a coup. Uh, regarding the part of like, Isabina Kolikitaka, Kemanguangwa, yeah, definitely. For those of you who don't know what Kolikitaka is, like, Something really crazy, and uh, yeah, Kemanguangwa, I would say that you should look it by yourself. <laughs> so for the last part, I would like you to tell me how will you celebrate after Venezuela is finally free? Well, I will go there, definitely, and okay. I will go to the beach, to my favorite beach. It's called uh, Cayo de Agua, in okay. Los Roques. Okay. I'm pretty sure you know it. Okay. And I will just chill there and just enjoy my country, enjoy freedom, enjoy all the little things that these people took from us but now we are getting back and I'm pretty sure we'll very soon we're gonna get back okay. and just enjoy our country enjoy our people and enjoy our young democracy that is about to be born again mm -hmm. and uh, yeah it's gonna be fun that's the only thing I can say okay, right now. thank you uh, any comments your social media your feedback well you yeah like um, you can follow me I have my Twitter I have my Instagram also on my Facebook page at Miguel Santa Fe you can follow me there, I'm posting pictures from everywhere that I go right now, here, living in Berlin. But every time that I travel, every time that I go somewhere, I like to take pictures of people, places. You can also check my website, uh, miguelsantafe.me. And uh, thank you, Anya, for this show, this okay. interview. And uh, especially here today, like this demonstration, 
And uh, yeah, I think it's a really, really nice place and a really nice occasion to give out this interview with you. So thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Welcome to the Venezuelan show. Today joining me is Gary. And we're going to do Hablo el Pueblo. We die while EU dialogues. What do you think about it? Well, actually, when it says EU dialogue, we are pretty much speaking clearly to the uh, European Union because it's unbelievable that up to this point, they are now talking about giving Maduro 90 days for organizing, you know, uh, polls for voting again for something that will not happen by no means. They are pretty much not understanding that we are not really going or willing to accept any more time. That people are dying where they pretend to be good and nice and to try to make other countries you know uh, look or look at them as the good guys that don't interfere with the problems of other countries i'm pretty much against them because there is something called dictatorships which is what we are having in our country and when dictatorships go on there's something to be done and i think that the european union the european commission the un they must do something okay, thank you okay this is not a coup, but the people's will. What do you think about it? Well, actually, my opinion is pretty much that because most people all over the world are pretending that we're having a coup directed by, by the US, Trump, and so on. Mm -hmm. But the truth is that we actually voted for a national assembly in 2015. And we actually voted for that and before Juan Guaido was legitimately elected. Therefore, people need to understand that this is by no means a coup. This is the people's will. Okay. Thank you. Venezuela is not having a coup. It is having a kuliki taka. Que <laughs> What well, do you think? Uh, yeah, this is actually like um, a game or a joke that we are making from people all over the world pretending that we are actually having a coup. But now we are practically having that. Which is actually something that only Venezuelans will understand. And regarding Kemanguangua, yeah, I mean, that is what uh, our wannabe um, uh, protester Capriles actually said because now we are thinking that way. It's unbelievable that Maduro is actually pretending that he will have polls and we will go to vote again for him and all the things that he is doing. I mean, all that can explain that is exactly this word, which, which only Venezuelans will understand, which actually means, man, really? So, that's pretty much it. Okay. How will you celebrate after Venezuela is finally free? I will go to the street and sing and like crazy. And I don't know, hot song or something like that. But no, I mean, speaking seriously, I think that uh, at that moment, uh, happiness would be like so sporadic and so direct. I, I can imagine myself like working, you know, and suddenly like I receive a message from someone like, hey, Maduro is over. I would like be in shock, maybe cry, maybe stop, probably stop doing whatever I'm doing. Even if I'm working, I yeah. wouldn't care. If I get fired that day, <laughs> I would scream, I would jump, move around and then like go to the street and call my mother probably and uh, maybe cry or something like that because it's been already 20 years it's been already so many lives lost it's been already so much pain so much effort for people to try to have a life and also get out of the country sadly because we had to we were forced to leave and now you know like having this news would be awesome i remember back in 2013 when chavez died we actually thought that that was the end and no that was the beginning of something worse <laughs> yeah. but, but our happiness was great yeah maybe we can be called as something bad because we were happy for, because of, someone was dying but the truth is that that guy was the reason of so many problems and sadly now in this part of the game we are actually just waiting for something direct and radical to happen yeah i agree 
And last but not least, uh, any comments, your social media, your feedback? Do you support the show? I support the show, of course. I support this guy, of course. <laughs> and uh, I'm really happy that here in Berlin, in, in Germany, we have this not so big community, but at least community of Venezuelan people. And uh, it's just so great that we are here and we can mix a little bit with the Germans and people from all over the world to show how uh, fruitful, happy, and uh, peaceful, and also great people we Venezuelans are. Thank you. Okay, it was a pleasure interviewing you. Thank you. <laughs>